Thanks for watching. Uh, a nice little lesson for you today. We're going to talk about these. And um, before you run off and hide in the corner and decide that you never want to play drums again, um, or you hate me, um, these are cool. These are cool. <clears throat> They're good for a lot of different reasons, and not just you know for jazz, as um, you know they they most commonly get get uh, used for. Um, they're great for your development of your hands because if you actually practice your rudiments and fills with these, they offer very little rebound, so they work your wrists very hard. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's amazing how many times you go into a session and stuff and you just have to lay down a, a cool brushes groove. And they're not always swing grooves, but, you know, if that's what the job calls for and sometimes, you, you know, you need to have a reasonable understanding of this. Having said that, I have a very soft spot for these. Um, I love playing them. <clears throat> um, and when at the start they're a little bit hard to kind of get the, the grasp of, but you know, um, something really worth pursuing because I think it's a, a bit of a dying art, you know, amongst some of the new drummers. And um, yeah, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about the basic a basic jazz pattern, and uh, you know, a little bit about <clears throat> my approach to brushes because I think it's a very personal thing. Um, first of all, grip. <clears throat> um, for those match grip players out there, you can play brushes using match grip, no problems at all. Okay. Um, I learned how to do it with traditional grip. Um, I play match grip a lot um, on my, my normal gigs, but um, for, for brushes, I always use traditional grip. And the reason why that is, is I just find the sweeping motion is much easier to do um, using the left hand like, like so. So for instance, with, with, if I use match grip, if I wanted to do, to do a sweeping circle, it sort of looks like I have to use my whole arm a bit like this. If I was to use traditional grip, you just literally, it's, it's more a movement of the wrist, okay? So like this. So I'm using the, the fingers to sort of push the brush up and back, if that makes sense, okay? So that's kind of the, the, the part, the main reason why I use traditional grip. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, something to think about. Like I said, you can do exactly, you know, great things using match grip, that's fine. So you need to, first of all, choose which grip you're gonna use. Which, uh, which you're more comfortable with. And second of all, you need to look at stuff like the motion, which, which way you're gonna sweep. Because brushes have this, this constant sound that you can produce on the drum and deciding which way you want your circle to go is a very important thing. When I show you a basic pattern, um, and in subsequent videos coming up, I'm gonna look at some of the other patterns that I use and you know some of the, the different circle work that I'm gonna do. But um, I choose to sometimes go a different way to what other people do, okay? So uh, sometimes your grip will, will change on that too. The other thing about brushes is that uh, the, the angle of the brush on the drum really affects the different sound that you'll produce. So uh, for a nice, really easy sort of uh, washy sort of sound, um, not too much of the brush touching the head is very important. So for instance, I'm just gonna do a sweeping motion and, and you'll see what happens. As soon as I angle my brush downwards and I push down with my with my with my my finger here you'll see the more brush that you have on the head the more sound that you're going to get from the head all right so it's great for accents etc etc so um so this is like just a basic um sweeping motion with nothing nothing happening all right all right now I'm going to angle the brush a little bit here and there and you'll see the difference All right, so every time I push down with my finger, I get more of a sound, okay? Um, so something to think about, very, very important. All right, the same thing goes for the other hand too. With the other hand, this is the only time I ever play with my, my finger facing up like that, okay? Is that I'll push down into the drum to get, to get more brush on the head, okay? So today, we're gonna look at a basic pattern. Now, I've created a little PDF with a little drawing um, on there so you can sort of see the, the motion. One, one hand is gonna go, the left hand is gonna sweep uh, around this way going in this direction and beat one is going to start up here on the left hand side of the drum and then it's going to circle around to beat two which is here and then back around to beat three and then around to beat four so you kind of get this happening three four one two three four one So 
you can see that I'm sort of doing the same thing and I'm trying to trying to create as much as possible a sweeping motion or a, or a constant sound, okay? The other hand is the one that plays the traditional, the jazz pattern that you may have heard of, which is, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, one. You can play it in the same spot if you like, but um, this, this pattern actually has the hands crossing and it's kind of cool because you know that beat two is over here, beat one is here, beat two, R3, uh, R4. Uh, so it looks like this, one, Two, uh, three, four, uh, one, two, uh, three, four, uh, one. And the only reason I can see that why you would move your hand like that is just for a comfort thing. So you get into a sort of a rhythm or a groove with your body as well as you, as well as uh, you know the music. All right. So joined together, they sound a bit like this. So they'll actually cross hands like this. Three, four, one. Really, really good idea to actually add your hi-hat in on two and four. I mean, but the, the pattern on its own doesn't need the hi-hat. But the bass drum, uh, sorry, the, the hi-hat will kind of give it a bit more, you know, a sort of more solid feel. Um, you can also do what they call feathering the bass drum too, which is keeping a very, very, very light quarter note feel on the bass drum. A bit like this. Three, four... Okay, so that's a pretty interesting, you know, uh, way of approaching brushes. Um, something worth checking out and uh, getting involved in. Um, like I said, there's going to be some more videos coming up with some more some more options for you. Okay, uh, make sure you download the PDF and you get the little diagram there, and you can see exactly what happened. All right, see you soon.